You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for January 25th, 2019. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have never been indicted, arrested, or convicted of witness tampering or obstruction of justice, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. missing out blue gal i think we we missed the boat we didn't get indicted yeah it feels like i don't know you know you show up at a party and most everybody's gone home and the, <laughs> the dip is all gone and they just have like the generic cola it's like yeah you know obviously we should have come a little earlier we, we would have been in the thick of it um this week uh our podcast is brought to you by our sponsor our, our loyal longtime stalwart sponsor where the good lord split you emergency farewell party supplies where the offer code this week is Nick Cave or the Rolling Stones. Um, that's a tribute to the two major news stories of this week that we'll be talking about. Uh, Donald Trump caving completely on the border wall, his stupid border wall idea, and, and agreeing that the government should be open. And Roger Stone being arrested this morning by the FBI, who at that time were working for free. So... It's been a rather lively morning, and it I'm sorry, has. Blue Gal, I, I caused you to miss a bit, of, a bit of that morning this morning. You did. You let me sleep in, and probably I needed to sleep. It all worked out. I just blogged in my pajamas this morning, and but uh, podcasting fully closed. Sometimes Drift Glass goes pants-free, but... I do. I do. I, I make up for <laughs> it by wearing a nice, traditional drudge snap brim fedora with a little press card in the brim oh, to let Lord. people know that I'm it just it, it's like my sorting hat it focuses my mind it tells uh -huh. me where I am <laughs> what I should be doing um and I tell you this morning I was in a totally different headspace I was listening to a bunch of uh uh gentlemen talk about combining the township and the county and the tax pluses and minuses and property taxes and it was a fine meeting, but you that were was... at this community meeting, right? right? Yeah. And it was like, okay, I'm sitting with a bunch of guys, mostly guys, uh, including some people who know who I am sort of on the down low. And they were, they gave me the little tap of the nose, like, I know who you are, dude. Mm -hmm. And, but it was, it was the mayor and it was people I knew in government and people I worked with before. And it was very municipal, very yeah. local, very much. Well, and they handed out tax benefits and the radio guys I knew were all there and they were all just... It was very, very local government granular trying to explain arcane pluses and minuses of shifting municipal boundaries and tax policy. Right. Which, right. Is, which is what government should do. The government should be boring as shit. This is exactly the sort of thing government should fight about. And they were kind of – it got a little spicy. Um, and then I come home and Roger Stone is in handcuffs <laughs> and the government may or may not be open by lunchtime. This is how government shouldn't operate. Right. This is the right. exact polar opposite. And so sort of shuttling between those two worlds of local, municipal, government by goodwill among people who think the government should be doing important things. And at the national level where it's just – it's run by vandals and pirates and looters and lunatics and racists. And the only reason it's not completely on fire at this point is because Nancy Pelosi uh, – was clever enough to lock the arsonists in the building mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. let it burn. You, you let, you let the fire asshole. It's you, 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 you're bragging about it. You were leaning out the window screaming that I, it's my fire. I, this, you're like Cagney at the end of white heat. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're at the top of the going top of the world, ma. And then it blows up. But you know, the after piece of that is you're still alive. It's still burning. And suddenly you realize maybe this wasn't a good idea. How do I get out of this while saving face? Well, you don't. Because you're a, you don't deserve to save face, you deserve to be run out of office. You and the rest of your thugs um, immediately, and right. that was the story this morning. It was the entire. Um, if I can just read very quickly, this is what Twitter looked like at about ten o'clock this morning. <laughs> very quickly, you know how they they have what's trending. This morning was Roger Stone, WikiLeaks, Paul Manafort, Steve Bannon, Mueller Friday, Nixon, Sarah Sanders, Robert Mueller. Rose Garden and LaGuardia, because LaGuardia was closed this morning, because asshole closed the government. 
that was the entire social media universe swallowed up by the pathetic actions, the, the vandalism of a loveless, soulless, empty husk of a human being. That and 60, his political party. And his political party and these 60 million meatheads who think he is the dear leader, who are mm -hmm. now very angry with him. Yeah, because they're tired of winning. For capitulating to the Dems. We're going to burn the country down to own the libs. And, right. you right. know, and he almost got away with it if, it if it wasn't for that meddling Pelosi. He meddling would have got grandma. away with it too. Right. Yeah. The meddling grandma mm -hmm. messed with him. Yep. Yep. And and uh, the rest of us messed with him too. I think, yeah. I don't think Pelosi is acting alone. And I no. think it's important to recognize that uh, the FBI really should, A, those FBI agents worked for free to arrest Roger Stone. They did. They did. <laughs> and to their credit, I thought this was a brilliant stroke mm -hmm. to call CNN in. Yeah. For the exclusive video of mm -hmm. of running video of Roger Stone getting arrested. That's what that is the only thing Howie Kurtz, you know, who's a mm -hmm. media bottom feeder who now works yeah. at Fox, which makes him a below the bottom feeder. That's what he was really interested in. Yeah. Who called CNN? Who who tipped off CNN? What? Wh how did CNN? Maybe it was somebody who was going to miss their second paycheck because right. of Donald Trump. Maybe, maybe that's was, who it was. Maybe it was journalism. I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. been so long since you were within spitting distance of your uh, original profession. You might not recognize journalism when you see it, right. but maybe so that's what somebody that was. Is, so maybe somebody in some journalism world in Florida, CNN Stringer, I would bet, mm -hmm. uh, it passes by Roger Stone's house at five o'clock every morning for the past <laughs> couple weeks just to make sure the FBI isn't there to arrest yeah. him. You know, yeah. I would that would be worth my time if sure. because if you want to be hired by a cable news network. And you and that's your catch. I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I'm going to I'm going to be there when Roger Stone's when the FBI knocks on Roger Stone's door. Yeah. So every yep. Friday morning at four in the morning, I'm going to be parked outside Roger Stone's mm -hmm. house. I'll be out for a jog. Make him a call. A jog. Yeah. Right. I mean, that makes sense. I'll be knocking the little jockeys off the rich people's lawn. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Frank Zappa reference. Yeah, Frank Thank Zappa you reference. very much. Yes, yes it is. Uh, so Drift Glass. Uh, a lot of people were wondering if we were even going to podcast today. I think that's nice of you to ask on Twitter. Well, we we uh, got busy because we went to the grocery <laughs> store as the president recommended, and <laughs> we just free grocery. We, we, we loaded up on shit. We never we got car batteries and we got <laughs> pallet trucks of I don't know whipped cream and toilet paper and some aluminum siding and all kinds of shit. Carts and carts of it. And you know what? They just gave it to us. Yeah, right. They just no. gave it to because that's what Donald Trump said to everyone in America how grocery stores work. Oh, yeah, if well, you don't have and, the money. And the whole administration is full of these grifters who never bought groceries in their life. No. And don't understand what hunger is or no. what not being able to pay a bill is, unless you don't want to, then you don't have to pay it. But you can wait, let the lawyers take care of that. But seriously, the number of Trump cabinet members who stepped in it this week and and Trump officials saying it's a free vacation. You're volunteering. Right. Uh, you know you, All you of don't did. have to, you don't have to work. It's great. It's uh, I don't understand how anyone could need a food bank when I don't understand how anybody could have any problems over one missed paycheck. You're going to get it later, and not understanding how most of us live at all. Not well, and, one iota. And the fact that. Virtually everyone making these statements. I, I put Wilbur Ross at the top of this list. The oh my you know, God. dried apple remnant mortal remains of Wilbur Ross, billionaire, who can't stay awake during cabinet meetings, who's three feet tall, and a wizened little husk of a man who barely can talk, who oh doesn't understand why you just don't go to the bank and take out a loan, because that's how banks do it. You just take out a loan. And it really is, wow, the... Let's tear, let's burn capitalism to the ground. Uh, ads are now just writing themselves because yeah. these people have no fucking idea how anything works. Yep. Uh, all he knows is Consuela goes out and he gets his poached eggs and his toast every morning at nine o'clock. That's how groceries work. And it never occurs to any of these people that anyone doesn't live like them or live in some approximate universe to them. And the idea that people literally do live paycheck to paycheck 
and a whole lot of these people voted for you assholes because a whole lot of these people are stupid and they believe they, they have been listening. They have been starving to death. They have been, their towns have been dying on the vine for decades and they've been, they've been consoling themselves by listening to Rush Limbaugh and watching Fox news and hearing about how it's all the fault of liberals and Negroes and Mexicans and, and women and so on. That's how they've gotten through the horror of their lives, slowly shutting down on them. And to find out that the people they elected are every bit the cartoon Monty Burns supervillains that liberals always said they were. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing comparable I can think of, uh, this did remind me of Richie Daly, uh, who made a a purely Chicago mistake when he was the mayor. And he, uh, during a blizzard, he, he went out and reminded people that, you know, when you dig a place out on the street, you dig it out and you put like your land furniture there, that's your spot. You, nobody can take that spot. That's your spot. And his chief of police and head of the streets and sand department had to come and say, no, that's not how the law works. Yeah. I yeah. know it's how traditionally in Chicago, if you dig out a place, there is a tradition, especially on the south side, of blocking that off with your crappy lawn furniture. Right. But that's, that's not, not actually the, how the, the law police, works. The police, the city of Chicago police department yeah. will not come and defend your lawn furniture no. for no. you. When you're when you've punched a guy out for trying to park in that spot and you try to claim you know property rights over the over the street, uh, you're going to jail. Right. The difference being that immediately he was corrected by his own staff. Uh, Gee, in this case, imagine entire- having a staff that could tell you what the law is. Yeah, actually, Mr. <laughs> Mayor, you know when you're when you're yelling about the guy the, the guy who runs streets in sand being incompetent, because his stupid idea was. Well, everybody go out and park on one side of the street. And then when we're done, everybody go to the other side of the street. That was his plan for snow removal. And and the mayor said, basically, who is this fucking idiot? And why is he on my payroll? And one of his people had to come beside and say, uh, he's your friend. You've known him for 35 years. And you personally appointed him six weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy's a genius. He's a great guy. And he'll, he'll get it done. Don't worry about a thing. You know, you know, oftentimes people who lead organizations, frankly, aren't that smart. They got there through some other means than competence. Uh, but, daily, that, but this is Donald Trump as well. It's, it's that's, the CEO mentality right. of my job is safe. I will find an underling to fire yeah. to make this go away. Right. And, and Daly, Daly was yeah. good at something. He had three or four things he was actually good at. He knew the city really well. He knew the neighborhoods really well. He knew the issues very well. He was very good on bike trails, um, solar power. He, there were a lot of things that you could admire him for while really, really – having a very serious problem with the level of corruption and, and back scratching and clout and all the bullshit that goes on with city politics. Donald Trump is good at nothing. Yep. There is nothing to yep. recommend him for any job above running his own mom and pop grifting New York real estate shop. He well, sucks he at thinks everything. He can run the whole country that yes. way. Yes. And surround himself with people who are dumber than he is, angrier than he is, more greedier than he is. And all they want to do is grovel and put I served in the White House on their resume and rip off as much as they possibly can while they're there. That's, That's all it. they yep. – and he surrounded himself – you know, he's a third-tier idiot who surrounded himself with fourth-tier looters and villains. And boy, howdy. If the country just, you know, were sailing along and everything was sort of okay <laughs> and he's just like, just don't do anything. Just don't touch anything. Don't push any buttons. Just sit behind the desk and shut the fuck up and play president. And no, no, no. He's got to decide that I'm going to deliver – on this incredibly racist promise uh, that I made to the racists who voted for me. Uh, and I'm going to shut the goddamn government down. I'm going to shut airports down, national parks down, uh, opi- opioid treatment down, health care down, SNAP benefits down. Uh, the Coast Guard is going to go hungry. The FBI is going to run out of, out of toner uh, to prove a point that uh, I, to get my wall that nobody fucking wants that everyone agrees is a horrible idea. That's the hill you want to die on. And I said this before. If Donald Trump is the hill that the Republican Party wants to die on, I suggest we accommodate them as expeditiously as possible. Yeah. Because it's not just Trump. It's everyone on the right who's this way. If you're not a member of his tribe, you are an enabler of him. Yep. And you all have to go. You all have to go. Drift Glass, where do you want to go next with this podcast? you want to talk about the caving or do you want to talk about uh, who's next? Do you want to talk about... Roger Stone. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about Roger Stone and Steve Bannon, who you is listed in the uh, 
indictment yes as the top trump campaign mm-hmm. official yep. who received this information from roger stone and uh, as many people said this morning uh people can lie emails and transcripts and uh phone transcripts and uh back and forth texts that have been scooped up by the Mueller team don't lie. So when you see these emails to Steve Bannon, these texts back and forth to Steve Bannon, it's pretty clear that uh, Roger Stone's house and office were also uh, in New York City apartment were uh, visited by federal law enforcement for free this morning as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's there is evidence there that's going to show uh, a conspiracy to uh, get stolen materials from a foreign country. Let's be clear as to what the crime is, because the next step is this gigantic, uh, I I think about the Incredibles where Dash runs around in a circle and rises all this dust, Yeah, right, to protect his family. That's Rudy Giuliani. That's Rudy Giuliani, exactly. So much dust is going to come up. The goalposts are going to be shifted all over the place to the point where the argument is, we were just raised. This is just politics. And right. and you can bet your bottom dollar that Roger Stone's argument is going to be you are criminalizing politics, right. which is an old uh, Karl Rove argument right. as well. It's an old right? Richard Nixon argument. Yeah. Old Richard Nixon argument. <clears throat> this is just politics. We're just fighting in a campaign and everything is on the table. Everything we do is legal. And everyone does it. Everyone does and this. Everyone, everyone does, does it. it. Mm-hmm. And Hillary would have done it if she'd been smart enough. <clears throat> That's right. right. That's right. Uh, this the the problem is this is a foreign government stealing and engaging in cyber crime, and mm-hmm. when you have a foreign government uh, with financial connections to the so called president of the United States, yeah, uh, the Trump Tower meetings went on into past the election. Now we're finding out uh, this is illegal. Yes, this is this is criminal. Th- there is and now a. I'm sorry. There's now a big, wide four lane highway mm-hmm. leading straight from the Kremlin to the White House. Right. And there are a few right. patches along the way of fog that it's still you can't quite make out what the details are, but you can see the shape of the road. You know right. how this happened. This is not a big fucking mystery. It's not like there's some third element out there. This this player X, this some sort of mastermind outside the system that's making all of these things happen coincidentally or just to make people look bad. The the simplest story is Occam's razor. Yeah. You know, Donald Trump was running for president and owed the Russians and a Russian mob a lot of fucking money and loaded him a lot of favors and loaded up his campaign staff with people who also owed Russians a whole lot of money and a whole lot of favors. And the favor was, we're either going to, we're going to wreck this country from the inside. And yeah. Trump didn't give a shit about that. He wanted his tower in Moscow. He wanted a lot of money and he didn't care much how he got it. And that was the deal. This was just a, this was the, this was, the whole campaign was a model home to sell real estate. Mm-hmm. It was never, he never intended to live in it. He never intended to stay there. He never intended to win the election. That was never the intention. The intention was always, I will run this scam long enough to make myself whole, make myself a shitload of money, uh, help these guys fuck over Hillary, who I don't like anyway, and she'll win. I'll go off and get a, a show on Fox. And the Republican Party will spend the next four years trying to impeach her. That's the that's the plan. That's what we'll mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. And suddenly he, again, finds himself inside of a building that he himself torched and with no way out and surrounded by people who are every bit as complicit or more so in treason uh, as he is. There's no way out. There's no escape. <laughs> the, all the exits are blocked because you fucking blocked them. And now the fires are starting to lick at his heels. And it's it, there's there's smoke pouring out of every window. And at this point, you're like, you know what? This much smoke, there's a fire somewhere. Yeah. There's a big fire somewhere. And a whole lot of really stupid people are devoting an enormous amount of energy to make you not look where where you want to look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you and I can't go there. The the half the media doesn't want to look. Half the media, you know, is is interviewing the other half about what's going on. But there is now a House of Representatives that has subpoena power that can kick that door in. Right. Right. And they've got to do it and they've got to start flexing that muscle in terms of uh, calling out the so-called president 
on his witness tampering when it comes to Cohen as well, because that's yeah. that's cannot stand. There's a lot of things here that cannot stand. And if we're not yeah. going to stand up and and uh, I personally feel that the other thing that cannot stand is what you noticed this morning. More Trump podiums, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. granted, he's the so-called president of the United States. The presidential seals on that podium at this point. But mm. uh, you can you can believe me. Believe me. <laughs> Trump 2020 was also on that podium. And sure. Donald Trump knows how to do one thing well. That is mm-hmm. wrap the fruit fly attention span around his little finger. Three weeks ago, three weeks from now, his audience, his base, that 23 to 33 percent of the American people won't remember that there was ever a shutdown. And if there was, no. they're going to blame the Democrats. Sure. That's that's and so the, uh, the uh, foreknowledge, our foreknowledge of that being true mm-hmm. is what depresses me more than anything. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. And uh, that what the other thing that depresses me and that we're, I, I don't want to get off on a tangent here. But the other thing that depresses me about this is uh, the leaning toward the Trumpism argument right. that is already the, happening among people who are supposed that. to be our friends. <laughs> right. Uh, if you are a left wing podcaster, if you're a left wing blogger, if you're a left wing writer or, or even just a journalist who wants the truth. Uh-huh. Stop calling it Trumpism. Yeah. That is a lie. It is the Republican Party. It is the Republican base voter who supported Trump in the primaries more votes than any other Republican primary candidate in history. Mm-hmm. Became uh, the president, the so-called president of the United States with the overwhelming support of Republican-based voters, and he still has an over 90% approval rating from Republican primary voters. This is his party. Yes. And if you pretend that he's an outlier, if you make the argument that somehow there is a good Republican party out there that doesn't like the tweeting or that... Once Trump is gone, we'll get back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to have another Trump in eight years. Yes, we are. Uh, Count on it. Uh, I wrote an article and I begged people to read it yesterday on Twitter. I even used the F word in a tweet. I'm sorry, but I did. Uh, You did. (laughs) You're the first person. I think they probably put you in Twitter jail for that. They (laughs) used the F word on Twitter. (laughs) And uh, I'm pretty sure you can't Two do that on the internet. years ago, I wrote this article yeah. before the election <laughs> in August of 2016. Don't yeah. you dare call it Trumpism. And I mm-hmm. showed that Fred Thompson and a whole bunch of other Republicans were using exactly the same kind of rhetoric on immigration that Donald Trump was using. Yes. And had done so in 2012. Before Donald Trump came down the escalator, they were making arguments. Uh, Mike Huckabee was saying, you know, let FedEx tag people. We can, right. we can, FedEx can ship packages better than we can control illegals. Mm-hmm. So let FedEx take care of these packages that are crossing the border and ship them home. I mean, really, uh, Fred Thompson was making similar arguments about illegals and how uh, these hordes of illegals. And, and of course, Steve King, you know, was the, right. the calves the size of cantaloupes was making these drug arguments. And, oh, it's all the drugs that are coming in from Mexico. We have to stop it. We have he Steve King had the electrified fence, the electrified wall and the uh, across the top of the that, that was his idea that Trump ran with. Mm-hmm. So uh, all of this Trump ism that people are trying to make this about Trump instead of about stupid Republican ideas and racism in the Republican party and the one third of this country that is fucking racist. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. And you don't want to talk about that because that hurts. It hurts to talk about how uh, there are people rushing to the defense of these kids in DC last weekend uh, Mm -hmm. with the native American drummer and how horribly they behave. I kept thinking about what my mom would have said about these huh. Covington kids and right. how, oh, you know, they, my mom would have said, those boys were not caught being good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they were not behaving. 
Where and, are your parents? Yeah. Where are your parents? Where are your chaperones? Right. So where's your adult supervision? Where's your yeah. adult supervision? Because, yes, <clears throat> teenage boys behave like assholes. That in large yes. groups, especially. That is true. They're stupid. They're missing a frontal lobe on their brain. It's not fully connected. All right. of that is true. But they were they were brought by adults to an anti-choice meeting ra- rally uh, against women's civil rights as a group of males at an all-boys school to mm-hmm. which adults sent them and paid for them for, to have the privilege of being there mm-hmm. and uh, had disposable income to buy MAGA hats. Yeah, tricked out in their MAGA gear with their MAGA banners. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, chanting with, with Tomahawk uh, movements and uh, being assholes, which, again, some of that is the youth and, and the idiocy that comes with youth, and I get that. Uh-huh. But then to have adults and all of Fox News rush to their defense as they're the real victims here. Well, now I know how to get on Savannah Guthrie in the Today Show. Yeah. I had yeah. wondered, how do I, how, do I get, how do I get my crack at the big time? Oh, now I know. Yep. Oh, okay. It's as easy as that. Great. I, I, I'm not going to do it, but Watch I do know that. whiteness work. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. That's yep. what happened. Uh, so I don't know where, where to go from here, except there are things about this that make this whole thing with Roger Stone and justice. Uh, we want 2019 to be a year of joy and justice for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I am worried. I am worried about how quickly we'll forget, and I'm worried about how quickly we'll go back to, well, let's just both sides this so well, that everybody can get along. And we can't go back. We can't let this happen again. We cannot let a Republican president take office ever again. No. That's it. No, no. And that's where, um, that's my sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, uh, and and part of me says, you know, Blue Gal, I've lived long enough to see things I've written, uh, insights I've had, mm-hmm. make it into print in the Atlantic and in, in Esquire mm-hmm. and the New York Times. Unfortunately, uh, they're not written by me. <laughs> uh, they're written by someone else two, three, four, five, six years later. <laughs> well, you know, John, I don't know John Amato, uh, I mentioned something to the effect of there's all these Trump empty podiums, or you did. And I passed mm-hmm. along and, and Amato said... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to plagiarize that for a tweet. And he said, that's okay. The New York Times plagiarized me last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and a, a writer I liked, uh, Jamie Bouet, uh, I believe his name is. And he's got a brand new column in the New York Times, uh, which I approve of. He's a liberal writing in the New York Times, which I approve of. But his column, his inaugural column, which people were like, that's a fucking brilliant insight. A triple plus. That's great. That's wonderful. Is that really what the Trump wall is, is, is a Confederate monument. <laughs> You know? Which is like and the I'm title like, of two of our podcasts, right? Two of our podcasts, <laughs> one from exactly a year ago and one from two years ago. And I and I don't begrudge him that, but I do I do have to wonder who did I piss off so badly that would you know <laughs> it's uh it's drift class don't get that job. You know, there's there's a there's a head of there's a wall studio out there somewhere. The Godfather. Oh no, the New York Times would be perfect for him. But he comes on with his olive oil skin and his and his and his Irish charm, and there's someone out there, there's some force in the universe that says this particular take on our politics, the one that we do here on this podcast, cannot be allowed to become mainstream, to be allowed anywhere near the mainstream conversations we have too soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe five years from now, maybe six years from now retroactively uh, you know i'm still um i still smile over the fact that we do have friends who have friends who know people in the industry Mm -hmm. and it's like well why why isn't this guy this guy's a really good writer and he's smart and he's insightful and he's been right about most shit how come all these people who are bad writers and wrong about things are indestructibly employed forever and he can't get anywhere near a byline in any magazine because if you want to be respected, you have to have a byline at a at a brick and mortar magazine. The every time you see someone on television, it doesn't say you know crackpot liberal blogger. Yeah. <laughs> it says managing editor, associate editor, uh, writer at the Weekly Standard. That's and these are horrible people who are just their opinions are shit. 
And it filtered back that, well, you know, drift glass is too shrill. Yep. Yep. And I have lived to see my shrill commentary ripped off wholesale Mm -hmm. and repurposed by never Trumpers and turned into bestsellers that are pimped by liberal bloggers. Yeah. Yeah. Liberal people who have liberal shows and liberal platforms. And isn't it amazing? Oh, my God. Thank God someone's finally saying this shit. And I, at some point, I have to accept the fact and, get, and, and, and be at peace with mm-hmm. the fact that this is just how the universe yeah, works. Yeah, well, and my prediction, and th- again, mm-hmm. I, don't, I hate to be a Debbie Downer on a day when Roger Stone is so like going to jail, right? Right, right. Roger Stone's probably going to go to jail. He might go to jail for three or four years, right? Yeah, he might. He might, he might, he might. get pardoned. Who knows? Might be pardoned. Who knows? But yeah. he might go to jail for a, few, for a stretch. He gets mm-hmm. out of jail. He gets a job on Fox News. He's going to get a job yeah. with, with some uh, industrial, you know, military industrial complex company. He's going to get a job talking to Tucker Carlson on, on the new crossfire. There's an unlimited appetite for this. And, and don't, don't stop me. I'm on a roll now. No, no. <laughs> the way I can prove this is Elliot Abrams was appointed as special envoy to Venezuela today by Mike Pompeo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Elliot Abrams pled guilty mm-hmm. to withholding information from Congress on the Iran-Contra affair. Yeah. Okay. Pled guilty to lying to Congress Mm -hmm. during Reagan. And now he's an envoy. He's going to be the one, you know, helping Venezuela work out, work out all the kinks in in their democracy. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, I I was going to say, do you know who the president of the NRA is? Yeah. Oliver Oliver North. North. Oliver fucking North. Oliver Making a million dollars a year. Yeah, Oliver North, there is no percentage in being right and being liberal no. in our politics at all. There is an absolute straight path from being a conservative rat fucker to being a respected MSNBC contributor yeah. that bypasses completely. That There's an absolution machine yeah. and it runs 24 seven. And it, it is something it's just a, at this point, I have to observe it like a phenomenon, yeah. like a scientist. Right, right. This is what the the sun's corona looks like. This is what gravity does. There is a machine inside of our media that is set up to make sure that Charlie Sykes and uh, Rick Wilson Elliot and Abrams. Michael Gerson <laughs> and Elliot Abrams are immediately absolved yeah. and that no one ever fucking mentions the shit they did five minutes ago ever it's, again. It's, it's and the they bill are, crystallization, Drift Glass. That's what we're going to call it. It absolutely is. <laughs> It absolutely is. It absolutely is. That's a perfect yeah. name for it. Yeah. Um, and and you can watch it happen uh, and you can trace it right. By, this is where it starts. And this is where they're being forgiven. And this is where uh, Newt Gingrich is on Meet the Press. Hey, look, there's David Gregory uh, who never bothers to ask Newt Gingrich a hard question ever. And here's Chuck Todd who never bothers to answer, ask Rudy Giuliani a hard question ever. It's like, oh, the host of Meet the Press it re- is required to be an asshole, to be a footstool for lying Republicans. And in his darker moments, Chuck Todd will tell yeah. you that. Yep. That's not my job to call out Republican liars on my show because then they won't come back and then I won't have no job no more. So there is a machine built inside of our media that if you removed it, we'd win every fight because it wouldn't be, there would be no intermediating. There would be no Chuck Todd or David Gregory or whoever inviting people who have no business showing their face in public ever again onto a stage, treating them with great respect and deference, never holding them to account for anything and releasing them into the world. And everyone goes, Oh, that guy was really interesting. That Rick Wilson, he's really smart. He says a lot of funny things and making sure absolutely dead sure that these people never have to sit across from me or from you. Right. Never have to answer a question from from anyone who has. Yep. Who has and and the the video I have that's still floating out there the time that I went to go see David Brooks live at the um, Hammer Schmidt Chapel, and the nice lady stood up with all of his clippings from the Weekly Standard and said, "Here's all the shit you wrote during the war. Now that it, now that everything is blown up in your face, what do you have to say for yourself?" And his answer was, "I don't think I ever wrote anything like that." Yeah, 
and there is no so so in in a normal healthy society that would be the end of david brooks's career there is a mechanism at work in the media that that excludes people who ask yeah. uncomfortable yeah. questions and and includes people who have friends who who are friends of friends of friends who are already wired into the system and so rick wilson can go from rat fucker to best selling author with no explanation of what the fuck were you doing for the last 30 years? How, what were you doing in 2015? What were you doing in 2010? Weren't you the guy that wrote that incredibly offensive Obama ad? What, all the people you're making fun of now are the people you pandered to your entire life who put the roof over your fucking head. Didn't you know they were racist then? I don't object to him being a mercenary at all. Mercenaries are what they are. I object to my liberal friends letting him get away with it and never ever asking him a question that might make him uncomfortable because they're personal friends. That's what I object to. I object to my allies selling me out and absolving people on my behalf who I don't think deserve absolution. Yep. Yep. That's really bothers me because that's because the way we got Trump was conservatives being allowed to falsify their own history, to lie about the past, to pretend Bush never happened to pretend that they're independents, to pretend they never supported Dick Cheney. They never had anything to do with that. They're, we're independents now. We're Tea Partiers now. And go right from that lie to lock yeah. her up, build the wall. And at every step along the way, those lying, racist, Republican assholes were helped, were, were propped up, dusted off, given a shitload of money, given huge media platforms, by the media that now wonders how the fuck did we ever get yeah, Trump? Yeah. And that's what kills me. That because I can see it happening again. I can see, oh yeah, when Trump goes down in flames like he will, these same people, the wretched of the earth, <laughs> the Bill Crystal people will come swarming back in. They will become the new Republican Party. And they'll just put Marco Rubio in charge. And all will be forgotten. And all will be forgiven. It's gonna be Rubio. <laughs> Who am I quoting there, Drift Fast? It's gonna be Rubio. Uh, uh David Brooks. David Brooks. You don't have to worry. It's going to be, it's, it's gonna definitely going to be Rubio. It's not going to be Absolutely Trump. It's going to be Rubio. <laughs> Rubio. Uh, and the thing that bothers me is this is not a meteor yeah, that we can't right. control. This is man-made. Yep. This is something that our liberal allies are willing to do for reasons that I do not understand. Well, and I think, I think the reason that, I think there's a little bit of a blind spot for you, Drift Glass, which is you there's are a big one, Blue outside Girl. the uh, civilized Chardonnay party set oh that's true you know that wants politics to be the game we play to get things done so to yes. speak yes. and and you can't play that game if you acknowledge the fact that one of the people playing the game one of the parties playing the game mm -hmm. isn't playing in good faith no. doesn't know how to play no. the game and i'm sorry to call it a game but the, my metaphor is going to break down in a minute but one side of this is acting in bad faith. Yes. And has been for 30 years. Yes, absolutely. And unless you, and started with Newt Gingrich at least. Now we can mm -hmm. go back to 1964 and, and add the racism in there too. Mm -hmm. Sure. But the point being that if you're th drinking Chardonnay with Republican members of the Senate and Chris H Matthews, and David Gregory, and everybody's just being very civilized about mm -hmm. this town. Uh, that village mentality that says, oh, you know, they don't know what, what we're actually doing in the heartland. Ah, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. Fly over country. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, and, and they're actually serving huge corporate interests. Yeah. I mean, now I'm really getting off the, off the trail here. No, come back on. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the, you, you don't understand why there's all of this constant recovery Con I, I do like that term of bill crystallization. Yeah. The bill crystallization keeps happening yes. to fix people, to fix people's reputations, to bring them back in so they can we can pour them another glass of white wine and, and keep playing the game. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so infuriating. And that's why the rule in the village is manners uber alles. Yeah. It is good manners. It, it is rude to point out that Bill Crystal is a blood drunk lying scumbag. Yeah, and, well, and, and the word lie was 
was rude up until Donald Trump, right? right? You couldn't say lie on television. You could say a whole bunch of other shit. You could, you could, you could literally lie on television all the time. Newt Gingrich did it all the time, but you couldn't say he was lying because there's some weird arcane market of Queensbury <laughs> rules that says yeah. you're not allowed to do that because that's very rude. And that, by the way, that's in my post about don't call it Trumpism. Yeah, uh, it's it, a great post. It, the fact that one side, that both siderism, that we must be polite at all times. That allows the side that lies to get away with everything. It does. It, it structurally yeah. disadvantages people who tell the truth mm-hmm. because those mm-hmm. people are inherently rude. Right. They're, it, by definition, if you are walking into a Chardonnay party and half of the people there are monsters and the other half are sucking up to them and enabling them and ignoring their monstrousness, simply the act of telling the truth about who's at the party makes you incredibly rude and unwelcome. Right. Because the minute you point the minute you make people acknowledge that the the Republican Party is full of monsters, then you have to acknowledge that you didn't see that. You ignored it. You have spent 30 years ignoring it. You've made an entire industry out of ignoring it. And that leads to some very uncomfortable questions about your incompetence, your amorality, the way you make a living. The way you are willing to sell your country out and see it destroyed rather than be rude at a cocktail party. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And acknowledging that the dirty hippies outside trying to get in are the ones who've been right all along. And that's not an acknowledgement that, that that those people are willing to make. Unfortunately, those people own all the cameras. They own all the microphones. They own all the newspapers. And they control who gets to say what in a public platform, except for, of course, podcasts and, and blogging, which we get to do. By the way, Rick Wilson will be getting a podcast. Uh, shortly. I don't know if he'll invite me, but I heard on Anna Marie Cox's show that Rick Wilson's getting his own podcast. So that should be very exciting. I wonder how many producers he's going to have on that podcast. Oh, I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> There'll be a lot of, again, though he'll be spend most of the time insulting the toothless rubes. Yeah. Uh, who, who were his bread and butter he, up until he five made ads ago. for, right. He, he was, ha- <laughs> he was thrilled to death to, to, to whip those people into a frenzy and point them at a ballot box for his sleazy Republican clients up until it no longer became financially viable to do that. Suddenly he's never Trumper and he's everybody, he's ever liberals friend. And we're all going to pretend nothing happened, which is why the one thing that will always survive blue gal mm-hmm. is both siders. Right. Both siderism will never die. It cannot die because it's the thing that keeps the party going. Hey. And the reason I know that is this week, Tulsi Gabbard, mm-hmm. the New York Times, Chris Cuomo, Mike Barnacle, just to pick four examples right off the top of my head, uh-huh. were all about how if only both sides would cooperate, Blue Gal. <laughs> if only both sides would get together on this government shutdown thing. If only both sides would see the light of blah, 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 blah. And the problem solver caucus saying, well, we'll all get together in the middle. Mike Barnacle doesn't believe a word of this. Yeah. He, he fucking well knows better. He's not that brain dead yet. And Chris Cuomo at some level knows he's lying. The, the people in the New York Times at some level have to know this is wrong. You know, it might not be immediate in their lap. I am lying now in this column, but there's there's some level of you know stink to this. And they just realize this is what I have to say to keep my fucking job. This is what I and and someone out there is enforcing this this ritual. Someone out there is throwing thunderbolts and saying, if you're not down with both sides, do it. Get thee to a bloggery because you're never going to get a job in a legitimate newspaper or on television ever. Yep. So someone's enforcing this code of conduct. And I have a feeling it has a lot to do with advertisers yep. and dick pills and reverse mortgages mm-hmm. and nothing to do with the truth of who is killing our country and why they're doing well, it. Well, and and the people that the suits upstairs play golf with because those are their advertising advertisers. Yep. Right. That said, Drift Glass, I want to just talk for a moment about Nancy Pelosi. And well, I want to talk about a real hero. Oh. A real hero. Whoever does Megan McCain's makeup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, the, the Twitter account for Peter Hustis, I hope I'm saying his last name right, uh-huh. uh, Real Sparkle Pony, uh, he yeah. showed a picture of Megan McCain and uh, her, her makeup and the word her people don't like her. That is it's so real bad. obvious. It's so, see, there is, there is an underground, there is a resistance There is a movement, resistance, and, mostly, and, it, and, and, and Donald Trump ha- did have to praise the deep state today in mm-hmm. his little speech. Um, no, Nancy Pelosi, uh, yeah. 
she understands everyone's been talking about how she understands power and how to wield it against Donald Trump. I think it's really important to also appreciate how she understands power when it comes to Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and her yes. her Instagram sisters and mm-hmm. putting four progressive Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee and uh, making sure that she said that the wall is immoral. I mean, she has put a line in the sand that she will not cross about this wall. That the and and her caucus is right there with her, talking yep. about medieval walls, talking about how it's not necessary. That this is mm-hmm. a monument to Trump's ego, et cetera, et cetera. Not allowing the debate to go to open borders. And no. oh, Democrats no. don't want anything, and and really keeping the message really strong that we want border. Democrats have been on bo- for border security. They voted many times for funding for border security. Yeah, and then Donald Trump had to say that in his speech this morning. And yes. so I'm scared about what is going to happen in three weeks because the people on Twitter that are saying this is a torture tactic where you let up on the waterboarding to make, see if mm-hmm. your victim is going to cooperate or not. Right. Uh, right. You know, I get that. Maybe this. Maybe in three weeks we're going to go back to another shutdown. I hope we have a goddamn general strike at that point. General, a general strike. A general. And and this means. Um, bus drivers and school teachers. Yep, and everybody walks um, out and says, yeah. "Enough." We're not going to put up uh, with this anymore, right? Because it's nonsense. Uh, or that Mitch McConnell grows a pair and shows up and says, "No, we can override your veto." Yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but something uh, well, got me... somebody's got to stand up to this. And if it's not well, the Senate, then it's got to be the people. I, I think it. In in over in a very short period of time, I hate to quote Donald Trump. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, Blue Cow. No, um, <laughs> in two weeks, in two uh, weeks, in three weeks. Yeah, the the the, the Pelosi House is going to start really getting out the pickaxes mm-hmm. and digging and digging, and and suddenly um, you can have all the distractions you want. Yeah, uh, nothing is more. You, you're never going to distract people away from from Watergate summer on steroids. Um, you're never going to distract people. There's not going to be enough yeah. um, in the firecracker factory to distract people from the fact that your entire administration is going to be hauled up in shackles in front of the house yeah. to testify. Yeah. yeah, And they're going to say some shocking shit. And, and that's going to happen. Bang, 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 bang. Cause there's at least three committees. Now they're investigating. The Senate has finally figured out that we better at least go along with them. I mean, we can't make the, the house can't make us look that bad. That's that. That's a that's a bad look for us. So, uh, yeah, in three weeks we might be right back here. I I think we probably mm-hmm. will. I don't think I I, I think um, Donald Trump is a uh, loveless, hateful, hollow tyrant uh, who who is a sociopath who doesn't care who he hurts, who needs desperately needs uh, constant adulation, constant affirmation and attention from racists. He needs to hear people applauding his sick fucking mm-hmm. ideas. And the only place he gets to do that is in front of the joint session of Congress. <laughs> and so Nancy Pelosi told him, I'm sorry, you can't come to my house and say shit until you open the government up. And I really do believe the government's opened up just so Donald Trump can have his yeah, audience. Yeah, That's the only reason he's doing it. He doesn't give a shit about traffic, air traffic controllers or the Coast Guard or opioid victims or anything. Donald Trump does not give a good goddamn. He's Voldemort without mm-hmm. the magic. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give a shit about anything. It's him. If he has to sacrifice his family, he'll do it. If he has to sacrifice his his most loyal lieutenants, his his right and left hand men and women, he will do it without a second thought. And the more they're in pain, the more he laughs. He is an awful, monstrously evil human being. And the Republican Party loves him for it. We got to do a news roundup now, Dirk Glass. Yes, we do. I just want to mention uh, all this talk about the uh, raising the tax rates to 70%. You know, the Kennedy era right. tax rate. <laughs> Going back to that. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gets a lot of credit for that. Uh, Elizabeth Warren wants to mention that she was on board with that uh, uh, all along, which is absolutely true. I'd also like to mention that my former congresswoman, Jan mm-hmm. Schakowsky, 
has been down with this since yeah, the nineties, yeah, I think. Yeah. So, you know, there's a whole lot of people out there who haven't been getting a lot of spotlight because they've been doing the work that they were hired to do, but their ideas are extremely progressive. A Trump appointee approved Jared Kushner's top secret security clearance application after it was initially rejected by two career White House security specialists. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. Mm-hmm. And there apparently there's a whole truckload of people who went through the same thing. That Donald Trump wanted to have all the secrets and the, the people who know better said, oh, holy shit, are you kidding me? And he overrode them or someone overrode them, which is unprecedented. A political appointee overrode yeah. them, yeah. Uh, 55% of Americans disapprove of Trump's job performance, while 39% approve. Those numbers should be really familiar. Yeah, well, and there was a CBS poll that the approval rating went down to 30. That was an yeah. outlier, but that did wake up a lot of congressmen this week, Republicans. Yeah. Well, those are George Bush end of the Iraq war numbers. Right. That's, right. that's the, the, the percentage you see that approved no matter what, that's the Republican Party. Right. That's who they are. So quit pretending this is Trumpism because it fucking well isn't. Yep. Uh, Wilbur Ross doesn't really quite understand why unpaid federal <laughs> workers were going to food banks when they could take yeah. out low interest loans. By the way, uh, Wilbur Ross is affiliated with a credit union that was charging 9% uh, for short-term loans. So there you go. Uh, Before the government reopened, air traffic controllers controllers union were warning that they couldn't even calculate the level of risk currently at play, nor predict the point at which the entire system will break. Well, and it it broke at LaGuardia this morning. It broke. And I think Newark was also down. There were a couple of other airports on the East Coast that just shut down. Because there were not enough people to ensure that the air was safe above them. 10% of TSA employees called out with unscheduled absences on Sunday, with many employees citing financial limitations preventing them from getting to work. Um, In case you're wondering, you're not imagining it, the lies are coming faster and more uh, ridiculously. According to the Washington Post bullshit ticker, Trump has lied 8,158 times since taking office two years ago. He averaged nearly 5.9 false or misleading claims a day in the first year in office. And now he has hit 16.5 a day in the second year, almost triple the pace of the lying. So he's going for the record, people. He's really, he's swinging for the fences every day. He's out there every day saying, how can I be a bigger and more malicious and more ridiculous liar than I was yesterday? And he's getting there. He's getting there. Got to give him that. Kamala Harris announced she's running for president in 2020. So did the mayor of West Bend, Indiana, or one of those Indiana places. I want to say Pete Buttigieg, but yeah, something like that. Some you know guy. That, you know, Junior He's Dude's going to be on board for a white guy. Yeah, you know, Junior <laughs> Dude's going to jump right on that. Oh yeah. Whatever. Question one: Where do you stand on marijuana? Question <laughs> where do you two: Can stand I work on your... marijuana? Is going to be his number one. <laughs> Can question. I work for your campaign? Junior Dude wants yeah. uh, marijuana legalized. He yeah, does. real bad. He does. Uh, Trump was involved in negotiations to build a Trump Tower in Moscow throughout. The yeah. entire 2016 presidential campaign, several months longer than any administration official or Trump associate has previously admitted. Previously admitted, they lied and said that they yeah. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 now like it's all out. All the cards are, are, are face up. Uh, Michael Cohen indefinitely postponed his plans to testify before Congress uh, over concerns of ongoing threats to his family from Trump and Giuliani. So... Senate Intelligence Committee just issued a subpoena for him to come and testify in mid-February. Well, we'll see how that works. That's a Republican-led Senate committee. They do tend to get along a little better. They aren't run by a Devin Nunez. Right. However, it's probably going to be behind closed doors. And uh, I'm I'm not sanguine about that. I'm not sanguine about any of that. All right. Researchers discovered as many as 20 undisclosed ballistic missile sites in North Korea. (laughs) Oopsie. That the Kim regime has never admitted the existence of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oops. On Monday, somebody reminded Donald Trump that it was Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, day of memory. Uh, Trump was hurriedly rushed to the memorial for a two-minute visit where he laid a wreath at the base of the sculpture and thanked reporters for being there. Two minutes. Yeah. With with yeah. with the uh, noted uh, African American leader Mike Pence in yeah. tow. Yeah. Well, and Mike Pence. This is a this is a fact. Uh, when he walked in front of the statue, which is made of, I think, white marble, Pence just disappeared completely. Uh, yeah. He's literally the whitest person you've ever seen. And he literally faded into nothing. All you could see was like a blue suit uh, and uh, a red tie down on all fours, uh, thanking Donald <laughs> Trump for whatever he's, he's groveling uh, in front of Donald Trump for today. That could be President uh, Pence, by the way, 
this time next year. <laughs> so, and yeah, don't forget that Mike Pence also invoked the memory of Martin Luther King when talking yes. about Donald Trump's wall. Yes, he did. Because if, if there's <sighs> one thing that Martin Luther King stood for, it's building a giant fucking medieval wall on the southern border. I mean, yeah. uh, really. It, it, did, it did allow a lot of people to remember what Martin Luther King said at the Berlin Wall in 1964. So, which was not... Build that wall. Build that wall. (laughs) The Trump administration hasn't imposed required sanctions on Moscow. Gee, nearly three months after determining that Russia violated the Chemical and Biological Weapons Control and Warfare Elimination Act by poisoning former Russian spy Sergei Skirpal. Yeah. Good. Uh, Rudy Giuliani swore that he had that no plans were ever made for Trump Tower Moscow, despite Hundreds of pages of business documents, emails, text messages, and architectural drawings proving otherwise. Rudy is, I, I, there is really kind of at this point, is this a strategy? Is, is just running around, shitting your pants, screaming at the top of your lungs, and walking back what you just said every other sentence? Is that a strategy or is that just Rudy being nuts? And I don't really care because it's not working either way, but it is interesting to see uh, how completely people who work for Donald Trump will wallow in their own shit. Well, he uh, had he had a moment of sanity this week when he wondered aloud whether I lied for Donald Trump was going to be on his tombstone. It will. It will. And it will. I'll make sure. Now, <laughs> if, if not on your tombstone, I will piss it on your grave every day. <laughs> uh, the State Department canceled a conference on border security because of the ongoing government shutdown over border security. Yeah, that's, that's just... Delightful. Uh, hundreds of IRS agents were told to skip work due to the shutdown, due to financial hardship, despite the fact that the Pharaoh in the White House ordered at least 30,000 of them back to work. And uh, uh, that's because he doesn't believe people need to be paid to work for Like him. I said last week, as I said last week, that's slavery. It is. It is. The shutdown impeded FBI efforts to crack down on child trafficking, violent crime, and terrorism doing, due to funding freezes, according mm-hmm. to the New York Times. Uh, Mike Mulvaney, or I'm sorry, Mick Mulvaney, asked agency leaders for a list of programs that would be jeopardized if the shutdown continues to March or April. I've actually been through this at the city of Chicago when they were doing furloughs Mm -hmm. and they were doing budget cuts. uh, And I assure you, this is not how any competent government shuts itself down. You have such a list already. Mm -hmm. And then you update it because you forecast that, oh, we're going to run out of money in whatever, October. Oh, we're going to have to cut back on whatever. The revenues are down, whatever whatever the problem is. You forecast way in advance uh, what emergency scenarios might come up that will require people working a four-day week or not working at right. all. Or, or in case a other. hurricane or storm hits yes. Washington, D.C., yep. you're prepared for what needs to be shut down and what are essential activities. You which, already have a list. Which right. tells me this was just a whim. This was just yep. a tantrum thrown by a lunatic that that because, crashed because the government. Ann Coulter and Rush Limbaugh were mad. Exactly. That was right. it. That was it. The only, there's no other reason for this to happen. Giuliani also claimed that it didn't matter if Trump engaged in conversations with Russia about the Moscow deal because it's not a crime. This is what I've been saying. Yeah. They're going to cr- talk about how this is just the criminalization of politics. Uh-huh. He went on to say there are no tapes. There are no texts. There is no corroboration. Because he's personally been through all the tapes. I have been through all the texts. I have been through all the emails. And I know none existed. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oopsie. Wait a minute. You've been through all the emails. And so you know none exist. All right. right. Uh, a few moments later, Juliana tried to clarify. I shouldn't have said tapes. <laughs> did I say that out loud? I didn't say that out loud, did I? Can we have a do-over? No, Julie. No, Julie. Moments after that, he said, well... I have listened to tapes. Yeah. I, and the Daily Show did a whole thing about, I never buried bones yeah, with the president. Yeah. No. What do you mean bones? Did you bury bones? I didn't run over people with a cement truck. <laughs> yeah, I, where did you ever get that idea? I don't know. What, why is everyone talking about the people I ran over with a cement truck? I didn't, I didn't dig a grave at the base of the Washington Monument, and you can't prove I did. Right. This is the... <laughs> This is if this were really if this were an actual television show, this would be the shortest episode of like Law and Order ever because immediately the guy would confess. <laughs> yeah. Just like that's, that's, who, 
Yay. Where'd you find that gun that's not mine? Oh, well, uh, in my house, I don't know what those bodies are doing buried on the floorboards. You didn't dig under the floorboards? Well, certainly don't go through their pockets because you won't find my wallet there. And it's just, wow, you're just spontaneously confessing to a bunch of shit I never asked you about. Way to go, Rudy Giuliani. The result has been, of course, you know, uh, in front of the cameras, you know, everyone's friends. Behind closed doors, apparently Donald Trump is apoplectic and furious with Giuliani after his lawyer claimed that he'd been involved in discussions to build Trump Tower in Moscow through the end of 2016. <laughs> because at this point, Giuliani didn't want to go to jail, too. Right. And so right. he's he, he doesn't literally doesn't know what he's going to say one sentence to the next because he doesn't know what the liar in the White House is going to make up one sentence to the next. And he's not always caught up on the latest lie of the day. And if you look at Giuliani just ru- just sort of batting off the walls, trying to figure out some shit to say to get himself out of this fucking mess that he himself got himself into, he's the physical manifestation of the typical Republican voter brain. Right, right. The Trump voter brain. Because they have no idea what lie they're going to tell to liberals like me to get us to stop calling them stupid. Right, right. Um, but the problem is they're stupid. <laughs> You know, they, they've identified the problem correctly, and there's no way out for them this time. Unless, of course, a whole bunch of both siderists and moderates let them off the hook this time. 73% of Americans believe that climate change is real. There's there's our hope. Yeah. That clo- yep. Global warming is happening, uh, and now it's up to a leader to communicate to the public in a way that doesn't frighten them into a paralysis. And this is really mm-hmm. just a communication strategy, folks. Just communicate with us. What do we need to do? There are things that can be done to fix this, and we can fix it. Uh, but mm-hmm. but don't terrify people. Let's get to work. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Trump directed Sanders not to bother with press briefings because certain members of the yeah. press cover her rudely and inaccurately. Guilty. So That's me. That's on me. Toss that out the window. We yeah. now not no more norms on that one. Uh, the Supreme Court took no action on the Trump administration's request to review the Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals Program, DACA, which means they took the leverage right out of their hands. They have no yeah. more leverage over that. They can't threaten them the way they were planning to because the Supreme Court said, nope, can't do it. Uh, Elizabeth Warren plans to propose a wealth tax on Americans with more than $50 million in assets. The tax is projected to apply to less than 0.1% of households and would raise approximately $2.75 trillion over 10 years. It will apply to 100% of Republican donors named Shelley Adelson. And yeah. that's why the Republican Congress won't vote for it. Will right. It'll apply to Wilbur Ross and he'll... Do I have to shop for my own food now? I don't want to go out. It's scary out there. Just bring me my eggs and toast, Consuela. And Consuela's on strike because fuck you. Yes, Um, There is one thing I do want to mention as a special favor to many people uh, across the pond from us who asked us to mention this. Tabling in our country means putting something off for future consideration, not considering it now. Tabling apparently in the... uh, in the British lexicon, in the parliament across the pond, means taking something up for consideration. It means the right. exact Putting opposite. it on the table. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So I don't want to start a whole war over this because we've been <laughs> through that. But let's just say we truly are two people separated by a common language. <laughs> oh, we love you over there across we the do. pond. We do. All and our, and we're sorry. Expat, we're so I, sorry. Our expat and yeah. and uh Overseas listeners and military listeners and all you guys, uh, it's been a, a crazy week. We have listeners from all over the world. We really do. We do. And I just really find – Australia. We continue have, to find that astonishing. Shout out to our Australian listeners. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Let me do a shout out to – there are actually listeners to this podcast who are incarcerated. We got there a are. letter. There are. Mm-hmm. And a shout out to you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Thank you. We really do. And we hope, you know, hang in there. Yeah. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Ozzy. Ozzy is short for Osric, the character in Hamlet. And like our kitty Olive here at the Cornfield Resistance House, Casa DGBG, mm-hmm. um, Ozzy lived outdoors for a portion of his life, only to find he enjoys the frequent treats that yes. come from living indoors. Uh-huh. I'm still a <laughs> wild cat. I'm still a feral I'm, cat, but... You know. I'm still outside, but in my heart. But, uh, mm-hmm. the, oh, you have treats? Yeah. Oh. And uh, I don't know if Ozzy 
does this, but um, our kitty Olive uh, tries with his paw to bury the treats. He yes. scratches the kitchen floor to try yes. to bury them once he's done. For yeah. later. For, For later. later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that shows you. It's just to prove that I'm actually an outdoor kitty. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, again, I said this last week. I mean it again. If you're affected by winter weather this weekend, uh, it's going to be bitter cold next week where we are. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of kids stayed home from school, including ours today. Mm-hmm. Uh, please take care. Take care of yourselves. Stay indoors. Stay warm. Stay safe. Don't slip on the ice, etc. We're thinking of you. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% or one half of 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Uh, Drift Glass, thank you so much for taking me out to dinner this week. And, it's tax deductible, uh, Blue Gal. It, it's tax deductible because we spent <laughs> the entire meal talking about Science Fiction University. We did. We our did. Uh, upcoming podcast that we're going to do probably in the fall. And, Parallel to uh, this one. Parallel. We're working not, on it. Not, we're not really, replacing this one. But. No, oh no, not replacing this one. It's going to be a, a separate uh, standalone uh, podcast. And it's going to be, we think right now, seven episodes for the first mm-hmm. semester of mm-hmm. Science Fiction University. And then if it uh, pays and, and pays its way, we'll uh, do more semesters. But yeah, we're working on the first semester and it, it sounds good. We're We're looking forward to doing that. Yeah. But it's going to be a standalone seven limited episode uh, podcast. We're looking forward to doing that. Hey, please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have agreed to keep the litter boxes open for three weeks while negotiations continue. Let's think about living. living. Let's think about loving. loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.